Hi viewers, I am creating these videos to help teachers of math support their learners in making sense of mathematical concepts and their associated procedures and processes. And today I thought I would look at finding the nth term of a quadratic sequence and in particular one of the processes that, that you can take pupils through and support pupils with uh, in sort of doing that, um, that is particularly sort of well you can you can represent it well using manipulatives uh you know there are there are a couple of procedures and processes for this and one of those that i'm aware of the sort of um simultaneous equation solving uh because it involves three variables is very very difficult to sort of model using the manipulatives um certainly using the algebra tiles the either the virtual or the um sort of physical tiles but there's another process that uh, is quite popular out there for finding the nth term of a quadratic sequence and uh, that process is sort of a little bit uh, more straightforward to make sense of using the algebra tiles now what i will say with this is that i've not yet found a way of making visual and uh, you know uh, using manipulatives to support the justification that we all know exists as to why the second difference between the terms of a quadratic sequence is half of the value of n squared um, again because it involves three variables that sort of justification or proof um, it, it, it really can't be modeled using using these sorts of things so we have to get pupils to the point where they are sort of comfortable with that either through pattern spotting and noticing pattern or you know through a, for, a more formal or informal justification or proof argument but once we have that then potentially we can use that to find the nth term of a quadratic sequence and we can sort of model how that's working or get pupils to sort of see how that's working support pupils in making sense of how that's working using the algebra tiles so i am going to um i am going to start off with a quadratic sequence and let's say i'm going to start off with the quadratic sequence three and then seven and then uh let's go with 13 and then 21. okay and so what we'd expect it what we expect pupils to have to be able to do is to be able to say right well this goes up by four so this is plus four this is plus six and this is plus eight and it's at this point that we could potentially identify that as a quadratic sequence and again you know we, if we've introduced quadratic sequences in the way that i outline in my video about introducing quadratic sequences then we might well have, have sort of introduced pupils to this sort of pattern um and recognizing that if the differences are linear in nature then it's a quadratic sequence that we're dealing with potentially and then of course from there finding the plus two plus two which tells us the second difference of plus two which means that the coefficient of n squared in this sequence is going to be one so this sequence is going to be a certain number of one n squared or one n squared plus or potentially minus some other bits and pieces and it's those other bits and pieces that we're going to have to find okay so how do we make sense of, of sort of a process for this well potentially one thing we might do is say right well we know there's only one square involved here so what i'd like you to do is to build these numbers using just one square for each of my n so when n is one i'm going to use a one square and then i'm going to turn that one square into three by potentially adding two to it like that and then when n is two i'm going to build a two square and then how do i turn that four that i have there into seven well potentially i'm going to add another three and then i'm going to build my three square 
And then how am I going to turn that 9 into 13? Well, potentially by attaching another 4 underneath. And then I can do the same thing with 21. I'm going to start by building my 4 square because I know there's only one square involved here. And then how do I turn that into 21? Well, potentially by adding a number five underneath. And actually, you know, for some pupils at this point, they will be able to see the nth term. They'll be able to see that that's just an n square with an n underneath and a one to the side. And if they've been well introduced to quadratic sequences with this, then, you know, potentially that's all we need at this point. Um, but we want kids to be familiar with the process when perhaps this isn't so straightforward. So what I'm going to say is, OK, let's just get rid of those. OK, what I want you to do now is I want you to remove the square part. I want you to remove the square part and I want you to see what's left. So the square part here was that. The square part here was that. Remove the three square from here remove the four square from here and what is left and what we have left now is two three four five and so what we're saying is right well if we start with our sequence three seven thirteen twenty one which is the nth term we're trying to find we know it's n squared plus something so we know it's n squared plus something, but we don't know what that is. And if we're removing, if we're subtracting from each term, the single square 1, then 4, then 9, then 16, which we know is n squared, then n squared minus n squared is nothing. And so what we're going to be left with is the extra bit. And so we can see that what we're left with is the extra bit in each case. And in this case, that's two, three, four, five. And because we've removed the n square, the bit that we're left with is linear. It's the bn plus c in effect part. And so if I can write down the nth term of this linear sequence, two, three, four, five, then I can work out what the nth term of this sequence is by adding back the n square so and again if pupils have been well introduced to linear sequencing then this as n plus one should cause little in the way of confusion or problem at this point and so i can say right well we know this is n plus one so i can build that this is n plus one and on top of each of these i'm going to put back now my square And so now I've put back my square, and I can see that if this minus that is that, then this plus that makes that. So this must be n squared plus n plus 1. And, you know, potentially you could look at some slightly more complicated sequences than that. I picked a relatively simple one just to get the idea across. But you could look at some more complicated sequences like that that are, you know, potentially involving multiple n squared or you know have a more convoluted linear part to to this expression uh, to this quadratic expression but at its heart what we're modeling here is the idea that because i know that this is a single n squared if i remove this n squared then what do i notice about what's left in there and sort of using that as a justification for this process so that is my short video on um, how we might model the process of subtracting the squared part to leave a linear sequence in order to find the nth term of a quadratic sequence altogether. Um, as always, I'd like to say a big thank you to MassBot.com and its creator, Jonathan Hall, for this wonderful website that houses not only the virtual manipulatives that I am using to bring you these videos, but all sorts of other sort of 
tools for math teachers and teachers of mathematics and if you are somebody who does teach mathematics regularly then i would suggest getting into in you know getting into that website having a proper look through it and seeing what it is uh, that it has to offer because i'm sure it will have something to offer you and again as usual if you are interested in using visuals or manipulatives to support uh, your learners in making sense of math concepts or processes or procedures, then can I suggest you check out my website, which is visiblemaths.co.uk. There are pictures and things around here. It's not just a blue background, I promise. It's because I'm on my uh, school's network, which is blocking those things. Um, and in the, on my website, there's a section about my book, which is also called Visible Maths, which is why the website is called Visible Maths. And amongst the things you'll find on there, you'll find a link to the publisher's website. The publisher is Crown House Publishing. And on their website, you can have a look at the book. You can have a look inside it and see some of the sample pages. And if you feel like it would be a useful thing, you can, of course, place an order. I have been making these videos throughout lockdown, and I think this is now the third one that I've made since lockdown has finished. So I'm hoping to carry on making them, even though we are all back teaching full time for well, pupils are all back in full time as far as possible. Um, so if there is a particular concept or process or procedure you feel like you would want modeled using or look at models using manipulatives or visuals, then please do get in touch and hopefully I'll be able to create one for you. Thank you very much for your kind attention today.